close your eyes and we're going to open up our pre-meeting with a prayer. Let's close our eyes. Gracious Father in heaven, it is Wednesday night again and we find ourselves right in the middle of our week. And Father in heaven, we know that you've been with us up to now. We know that you've guided us. But we come to you tonight, Father, for we want to ask you to help us to be able to hear your voice above the sounds of the world. Your word counsels us very clearly that my sheep will know my voice. And we are asking that as we spend time in the presence of your word, that that sweet, gentle voice of yours will speak to us. Father in heaven, I'd like to lift each one who's watching with me into your presence and I'm asking that you will, whatever their need is, that you will meet that need. Holy Spirit, please guide us in truth, for it is truth that sets us free indeed. And we know that the words of God are truth. So please guide us, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, dear friends, the heading of our study is in the world, but not of the world. Now that concept or thought comes out of that prayer of Christ in John chapter 17. When he was speaking to his father and he was telling his father that he has disciples that Although they find themselves in the world, but they are not of the world, just as Christ was not of the world. And this got me thinking. You know, Christian needs to recognize two things, two realities, very, very important for us to understand. First of all, the reality of being on planet Earth. There's a phrase that I often use, welcome to planet Earth. Especially when people find themselves in hardship or find that they are confronted by the same trials that other people experience. The word counsels me very clearly that we are in this world. And so if it's raining around you, the probability it could rain on you too. And the reason why I felt it's so important to address this is I've been confronted on several occasions when people come to me with questions that they have and they are wanting an answer. The latest question that seems to be coming to me quite frequently is should we or should we not have the um, vaccine. Now, dear friends, it's not my intention tonight to actually address that, but I'm hoping that after our study tonight that you will consider the, the words that I'm giving to you and that you will go and find out what you need to do. But first of all, I want you to recognize that we are on planet Earth and that what happens to us on planet Earth the word counsels very clearly that there's going to be wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes and pestilences. In actual fact, in the book of Revelation, we are counseled very clearly that the words that are spoken there is woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. And when you think about this, we somehow as Christians almost want to find ourselves, although that we are in the world, we don't want to experience the reality of being in the world. And dear friends, some of, us, some of us as a result want to live as if we are not here. But you are. You need to buy food. You need to eat. You need to wash. You need to do the, you know, the things of life in order to sustain the life that God has given you. But the question that really should be asked is this. How should I go about, on, when I find myself on planet Earth, how should I go about my things? 
Now, I've, I don't know how many of you know, but there was a time when people used to wear a band. And on the band was written, what would Jesus do? Now, this is very important. And I want you to understand that Jesus came to set an example for us. Jesus, in fact, said himself very clearly, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Do you understand? So he came to, to, to walk the pathway that we are to walk. But I find that we are here and we need wisdom to be able to, to cope with ourselves and in the environments that we find. And so it is my intention to, first of all, let you understand that this question regarding taking the vaccine or not is a very important question because I happen to find myself on planet Earth. Now, one of the problems that we experience, especially with regard to the vaccine, is that we've still been given the power of choice. And some people root for the, the idea of taking it, and some people have a lot of evidence against not taking it. And so people are wondering, should I or should I not do it? Now, I don't believe that, first of all, Ministers are qualified to give, the, to give the answer to that question. I do believe that one needs to go to those who have knowledge regarding it. You need to go and study what they're saying. And after looking at what they've saying and comprehending in some sense, you need to make a decision. I do believe that God's given us a sound mind. And as a result, we need to go on our knees ask him to guide us and he will now there's a reason why i'm bringing this out there are two types of knowledge that are found in god's word first of all the word of god as jesus teaches us there in psalm 119 and you know this uh, very well psalm 119 and i want you to look at um verse 105 so psalm 119 verse 105 your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for on my path do you understand that the word of god is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path but i want you to understand something that this word deals with two aspects it deals with you as you find yourself on planet earth and it instructs you as to your behavior here but then i want you to understand that the word of god also gives light regarding the fact that this world is temporary this is just a stepping stone into eternity and as a result christian finds himself in a place where we are not only to ask about how I should behave on planet Earth, how should I deal with the problems I find here. But I should also be interested in trying to find out how do I uh, prepare for heaven. Now, the interesting thing though, dear friends, when it comes to our behavior, you don't have a certain type of behavior here and then later on have another behavior somewhere else. In actual fact, the character qualities of Christian should be the same on earth as well as in heaven. But the reason why I want, wanted to address is that although you are in the world, you are not to behave or to follow the counsel of the world unless that counsel can be endorsed by the word of God. Do you understand? So let me explain. When it says your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path, I do believe that in all circumstances, regardless of what it is, that you will find clear instruction in God's word. So let me use an example. Should you find yourself in a place where you are trapped by debt, somehow you have not perhaps followed a budget system or there was something that happened to you 
The word of God in the book of Proverbs very clearly counsels us that if you should find yourself ensnared as a gazelle, caught in a trap, then the word of God says this very clearly. This is what you must do, my son, to free yourself. Let no sleep come to your eyes. Go to the person to whom you owe the money and plead with them and ask them to give you time. But then it says you must go out and free yourself. Now, dear friends, the reason why I'm bringing this out. A lot of people find themselves in trying circumstances, basically because the information that they have followed, perhaps, or the guidance that they followed has not been good counsel. Do you understand? They perhaps heard, let us eat and drink and be merry for tomorrow we die. No, dear friends. When it comes to certain aspects in life, let's say, for example, again, in the choice of a companion, what kind of wife should I choose for myself? Then the word of God is very clear. Again, the kind of character qualities that you will find. Now, the book of Proverbs is a book that has 31 chapters. And I always counsel young people. And I'd like to extend this counsel to those older young people. <laughs> those who've been walking on planet earth for quite a while and have just come to a knowledge that God's word is a lamp to their feet and a light to their path. I want you to understand that the book of Proverbs was written with the purpose of instructing you who, who happens to find yourself on planet earth. You're not in heaven yet. So the instruction is not about heaven. It's about how to deal with the different problems you have. Now, the word is very clear. And I mean, I want to read to you out of Proverbs. And Proverbs says very clearly in verse 8, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head, and a chain to adorn your neck. You see, so the, the word is very clear. Now, if you jump back to verse um, 2, or verse 1 of Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs says very clearly, Solomon says, The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. Now, it's quite interesting where he says, Follow the counsel of your father. You know, my son, listen to the instruction of your father and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Now, David was Solomon's dad. And the most interesting thing is that if you go and read Psalm 119, Psalm 119 actually gives us the foundation on which Solomon actually builds everything that he teaches in Proverbs. Now, the word counsels that, that the, the book of Proverbs was given for gaining wisdom and instruction. Instruction of how to cope or how to deal with the problems that you find on planet Earth. There are 31 chapters, one chapter for each day of the month, if there are 31 days in the month. And I advise young people to go and read a chapter a day. It's not necessary to get caught up with it, but just to read one chapter a day. And once you've done the 31 chapters, go back to chapter one again and start again. But if you have a specific question, I would like to say that then you approach the book of Proverbs looking for that particular item there. If it's got to do with finances and you find yourself entangled or entrapped in finances, then you go and look at what it has to do when it comes to the management of finances. And it's not only in the book of Proverbs that we find great counsel. Now, dear friends, I haven't got time to go to the different aspects, but should you, as God's child, find yourself on earth in a place where you don't know what to do, how you should go about um, maybe even reconciling with somebody else, the Word of God gives very clear counsel regarding that. And as a minister of the gospel and as a student of the Word, I'll be more than willing to assist you and guide you in the word to try and find a solution to the problems that you might encounter. Because there are solutions, dear friends.
if it's for example regarding um, a family re a, a situation or a relationship between a husband and wife and what should they be doing the word of God should become that lamp to your feet and a light on your path so I want to explain this to you I was once asked by people who weren't um, of the similar faith to mine they and yet they were open to instruction they did not attend church they didn't claim to be um, Christian and yet they were you know godly people but these people had heard that I counsel people and so they came to me and this is was at the health center where I was they came to me and they asked if they could receive instruction now the interesting thing is that the husband had phoned me and the husband and the wife were having serious problems in actual fact it had come to such a place that they were actually considerate considering separating and when they came to me I realized that this is a problem that they're encountering on planet earth now i want to just give you just something but we're not going to discuss it but people ask me are we going to be married in heaven my answer is yeah near yes no <laughs> i don't want to go into that but what's going to happen in heaven is a little different to what's happening on planet earth do you understand but on planet earth we marry and we're giving marriage we work, we put in bonds, we build things, we break them down. The Word of God is very clear that we are here at the moment. I always think of the story of Joseph. I'm going to come back to my story about this family. But the story of Joseph, for example, he finds himself there in Egypt. God reveals to Pharaoh what he's going to be doing on planet Earth, not what he's doing in heaven. He advises Pharaoh that there are going to be seven years of a fam, a, a extreme a lot of food and then there's going to uh, be seven years of lean and God guides them but then the interesting thing Joseph comes along Pharaoh places him in charge of the whole affairs and and Joseph takes sorry Joseph takes this information and he approaches God and he asks for guidance as to what he does and you now he is instructed it's very clear in God's word so God is not only concerned about what your role is going to be like in heaven or what's going to happen there but he's very interested in what's happening with you on planet earth and it is his desire that you will experience the blessings so this family um, approached me the husband approached me he was very concerned he says my wife wants to leave me but I heard that you will counsel us and and I said to him of course and uh, he made an appointment with me but about two days later, he phoned me and said, is it possible that his wife could come in, my pl in his place? And I said, of course, you know, I said, but you, you know, you must understand that it will be my desire to see the two of you, but let your wife first come in. Anyway, she came to see me and I had a piece of paper with my pen all set aside. And before we started, I advised her that I was a minister of the gospel and that my handbook that I would use to counsel them would be the word of God do you understand that and she said yes and then I let her speak and after she told me everything and she basically was trying to let me see her side of the story you know from where she was standing and it was very important for me to listen to what she was saying to record what she was saying but then my counsel would not have been at or directed in trying to answer questions or trying to agree or disagree with what she said, but to help her to see what the word of God's advice was. And I said to her that the word of God advises regarding this after we had finished. When, when she left, I could see that, there was a tr that the Word of God had made a tremendous impact on her thinking. And she'd left. About two days later, 
the man came to see me and while he was sitting with me before we even started i said to him i want you to understand again that i'm a minister of the gospel and the word of god is going to be the guideline or the instruction from which i'm going to get the information and share it with you do you understand he said yes and then he started to basically give him give me his side of the story and it made me think of that experience where solomon finds himself where these two women were in dispute regarding the child that was still alive because one of the women had slept on their child or while they were sleeping lay on her child and her child had died and there was this debate about who was right whose child it was do you remember that and how that the people were astounded at the way in which Solomon resolved the problem between them. Now remember, this is not a problem in heaven. It was something that they were experiencing on planet earth. A problem between two women as to who the life child belonged to. The living child. And the interesting thing is that Solomon then called for a sword. He asked for the child to be cut in half, the living child, and to be shared with both parents. And of course, what was so amazing is that the mother of the child said, no, no, don't do that. Rather give the child to that woman. And Solomon knew straight away who the child was. Now, I want you to understand that when people like in this family that came to me, this couple, I, after listening to them, would guide them in the simple instruction as to what the word teaches. And, and then I would go and spend time in prayer addressing the different issues um, and using those issues to try and find out what the word says regarding that. The beautiful thing is that after I counseled the, the, them individually and then counseled them as a couple, a few times they left and the most amazing thing is they, and maybe I shouldn't say the most amazing, but the, the wonderful thing is that the word of God resolve the problem and that family is still together to this day so what i'm trying to say to you that it doesn't help for us to live with our heads in the clouds it doesn't help for us to almost you know live as if we are not on planet earth because you are and god's word is a lamp to your feet and a light for your path. In actual fact, it's so interesting that if you go and look at the life of Christ in his early years, where he got his information from was from his mother's knee and his dad's instruction. And then, of course, his mother taught him out of the word those principles that were so important. And those principles governed his life all the time. It's interesting that in Psalm 119, that, and I think it's verse 11, that um, David actually says, again, and I would like to just go and confirm that. Um, Psalm 119 verse 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Isn't that beautiful? Christ learned to take the words of God and to hide them in his heart, to make it his counsel. So I want you to bear in mind that you are on planet earth and that, you, that the word of God can guide you here in the serious matters of living. It really does, dear friends. It's got guidance in every aspect that you can imagine. But then I also want you to recognize that the word of God also has been given to to show or to help us to see the narrow path that leads to heaven do you understand so not only is it going to deal with the things that you are doing on planet earth but the main objective is to make sure that you are preparing for eternal life where we are going to find that there's no death there so you don't have to learn how to to bury people there. There's no sickness there, so you don't have to learn how to uh, deal with, you know, illness there, um, just as you do here. And it's also, for example, got nothing to do with finances. Our world is all about finance, but um, heaven's not about money. Do you understand? Your bread and your water will be provided there, but God promises to do that for you here. 
But I want you now to jump with me to the book of James. And the book of James is a very interesting book. And I'm, I might do a series on it at some stage, but it's one of the most practical um, books for guiding you and to basically give you a measuring stick. Now, in um, James chapter 3, from verse 13 right down to verse 18, we are counseled very clearly regarding two sources of information. And the one, as um, James referred to, is that from the world. And one has to be very careful when you look at that information. In actual fact, James goes far, as so far as to say that that information basically has demonic origin. So one has to be very careful. How do you differentiate between what is right and wrong? You can't do it by looking at what the world says. You have to decide or find out what the word says because it's very clear that the words of God is truth. Do you understand? But then it says in verse 17, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is. Now, if you go again to the book of Proverbs, and you, I think it's Proverbs chapter 8, you will find that wisdom was there in the beginning with God. And wisdom cries out. It is Proverbs chapter 8. And wisdom is, is asking you to hear her cry. Now, the interesting thing about wisdom is that wisdom was there in the beginning with God. When God started to put the worlds together, wisdom was there. The way in which God structured everything was according to rules and regulations, according to formulas. And when you break these formulas, that's when you have this terrible, um, how can I say, problems that you experience. You know, dear friends, I honestly believe that we learn a wonderful lesson from the atom. It's, a, it's really in its, um, in its correct structure does no harm. But the moment you split the atom, the moment you break the atom apart, it becomes extremely dangerous. In actual fact, to such an extent that it can wipe out life and for many years later, it can actually affect life. That is what the atomic bomb is all about. And I truly believe that the day Adam and Eve broke away from God, violated his law, it was like an atomic bomb that went off because immediately we were not in sync anymore with the rest of the universe. And the objective of the word is to bring us back into unity with God as well as the universe as well as creation, dear friends. So the word of God guides us. But so James tells us that there are two sources of wisdom. And I want you to bear in mind that it is very important that you go. And I would like to say this. Ministers should have a foundation as to how to guide. You know, it's, it's amazing to me that Ellen White wrote Lots of different kinds of books, some on health, some on finances. I'm actually amazed that most people are more concerned with, with, with health and the information that she gives there, but disregard the information that she actually gives in the book of stewardship. And then there is books for, for young men and young women. And, you know, there's a, the book for the family. It's interesting that God recognizes that we are on planet Earth. And therefore, he guides us. And so I do believe that there is counsel in every field that you find yourself in on planet Earth, even as to how you should work or not work. I want you to recognize, though, and I want to draw your attention to this. There are two places in Matthew chapter 7, we are clearly told that a wise man is a man who not only hears the words of God, but does them. Now it's amazing that when you look at the book of James, James says very clearly in James chapter 1 verse 22, he says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. 
Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. So I want you to recognize that it doesn't help for you to come and get instruction from the word without doing what the word tells you dear friends sometimes the blessing can only come when you've followed the instruction in actual fact the way that you should look at god's word he actually goes on to say this verse 25 but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that's the word of god that gives freedom and con and um, confirms in us um, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So dear friends, let me say this to you. My purpose for tonight was to say, I recognize that you are on planet Earth and welcome to planet Earth. But I wish to advise you that there is wonderful counsel in the Word of God. Counsel that guides you here, that although you are in the world, the, the Word of God will counsel you to live in such a way that you will be blessed. And the reason sometimes why we reap such terrible harvests is because we've sown seeds of, that actually produce that harvest. So I want you to bear in mind that the counsel of God word helps me to recognize I'm here and God will deal and help me to live a blessed life on planet earth. But the word of God is also a lamp to my feet, instructing me that although I'm in the world, I am to prepare for heaven. And the interesting thing, dear friends, the only thing that you will take from this world to the new heaven is not anything that you possess now. It won't be houses, won't be clothing, won't be food. Because the old order of things will have passed away. But what you will take with, with yourself to heaven is the character that you now have on planet Earth. So the molding of your character is crucial. Thank you so much for joining me. And I do want to ask that if you have any questions, no matter what it is, dear friends, please WhatsApp me and I will respond to it and guide you to the best of my understanding of the world.